Iron Man podcast three. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> like yeah, we're only at three, but still three is like a lot to me right now. Well, we couldn't do one for like two months, and now three in a short amount of time. So I think that's why too. I feel that way is because we've had to put it on hold for so long. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It just feels good to be doing them finally. I don't know why I don't really like doing them. I don't know. It's just pushing information out, I guess. Pushing information out. So I like that aspect, but I just, I like hate talking and being on camera. And I think that kind of helps though, too, because then I kind of, not as serious, a little more silly. <laughs> People can relate to it a little better. I don't know. But yeah. So podcast three. Welcome back if anybody is ever watches. Um, <laughs> uh, today we're going to talk about gym etiquette and I just, before we go into this, cause this is going to hit some people. It's going to yeah. have some stingers in it. Yeah. This is, this is going to going to have a few owie moments. Um, hey, if it's, if it's you just stop. Yeah. Just own <laughs> it and like change. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in all seriousness. This, I just want to just get it out of the way ahead of time. Uh, not really trying to make anybody feel bad here in any way. Um, if anything, I think it's on us, not only as coaches, people in the fitness industry, but just as males, the gym has always kind of been our area. Mm-hmm. And thank God that's changed, you know, it's awesome to see women in the gym and women lifting. And a lot of you don't know gym etiquette and that's our fault. Yeah. We either didn't teach you or didn't show you the right way. So some of these might sting. Here. Yeah. Some we're of these might sting and, and it might feel like a personal attack, but I just want to say for it's, it's our fault. It's our responsibility. Yeah. Um, and that's the reason why we're doing this and we'll try and keep it. Uh, a little humorous so that it maybe doesn't sting as much. But. Yeah. It's truth with a little bit of sarcasm. Hopefully. Yeah. And ladies, if you do feel attacked, realize, Oh, I'm going to tear up some guys too. So don't look, it's not all at you. Don't worry. Yeah. Um, so getting into this, um, you know, if you, if you look online, there's a whole bunch of articles about gym etiquette and stuff like that. But mm-hmm. the thing is most people aren't ever going to go read those. Um, the average person that goes to the gym, isn't just going to go home and Google. Uh, I wonder what gym etiquette is. You know what I mean? No, it's you kind of you kind of learn it through watching, right? And obviously, when you watch the wrong thing, you know, then you start doing the wrong thing, and then multiple people start doing it, right? And it's a lot of like learned. And then um, also to realize we're going to cover what's standard, standard practice in any good gym, right? Also, bear in mind when you travel, every gym has. There are a few bolt on rules that are a little bit different. It has to do with culture, ownership, mm-hmm. what type of style of gym it is. Uh, so a strength and conditioning gym is going to have a lot more bolt on rules yeah. than a plan of fitness. But you can also take like shirts is a good example. Like we don't make people wear shirts in our gym, but like plan of fitness will. Right. Like you can't take your shirt off at plan of fitness, but here's different. Yeah. It doesn't mean one's right or wrong. It's just, it's just different rules because yeah. people different on the gym. Right. So without any more delay or rambling, uh, actually, this one was the first one in my head because I saw it like almost every day last week. No, this happens every single day. Is uh, step away from the dumbbells. (laughs) Right? So the dumbbells are all in a row, Mm -hmm. you know, right in front of the mirrors. That's pretty standard in every gym. You're going up to do whatever. Get your dumbbells and move back. You get a lot of you ladies. I'm, again, I'm just going to start in on you right now. You're the number one offender at this that I see. Yeah. Is, no, I don't disagree. Yeah. Is get your dumbbell, whatever, whatever dumbbells you need, step back. You don't have to be three inches away from the mirror to see yourself. You can, you can be four feet away. You're still going to be able to see what you need to see and perform the exercise. Right. Right. <laughs> what you don't realize what you're doing is when you grab those dumbbells and you stand there, you're blocking that entire rack off from anybody else getting access. 
then you're also blocking off traffic from any from anybody else trying, trying to get to a dumbbell through. or walk through or put something up. Yeah. So get your dumbbell and at least back up to where the benches are. Like, no, I don't want to sit here and hold my 100-pound dumbbells because you want my hoop. Right. <laughs> like, I'm getting tired. Yeah. <laughs> like, just get what you need and back up. Yeah. Um, that's why the benches aren't on top of the dumbbells. They're four feet back. Just just take a few steps back. Yeah, because yeah, you're going to have your own little spot. And your little spot shouldn't be where everybody else's right. stuff is at. Just have a little situational awareness. Yeah. Um, but, um, to, again, I'm just going to keep piling them on here. Uh, secondly, don't be the hoarder. Oh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that one's bad. Again, uh, ladies, you're the primary offenders of this. Um, and what you don't realize is you're not hurting the men generally. Hurting you're hurting other females, other women that are trying to work out. So right. when you come in and you grab the three pound dumbbell, the five pound dumbbell, one of each, the three pound, the five pound, the 10 pound, the 15, and a 20, you just took all those out of use for any other female yeah, or anybody else that wants to use them. And then you're sitting on them, hoarding them. It's, it's, it's very rude. Same with the machines too. Yeah. Like people, like if you're jumping between two exercises, it makes sense, but there's people that'll go one, two, three, four, and they won't let anybody else use them. It's like, no, I'm using that right now. It's like, yeah, come on, bro. You don't own, you, you don't get to choose everything. Like you don't own everything. Like so, let some other people get in. Right. And that one just kind of like organically just rolled into that Yeah. next one. Oh. Um, so yeah, don't, do what you need to do, but don't hoard all the dumbbells from all the other ladies. Like that's just messed up. But, well, yeah. And what do you need them all for? Like, go, you don't. just go pick them back up. Yeah. Like, um, even when you're doing a drop set, you still, yeah, you still put the other dumbbells down, and the other dumbbells are still sitting on the entire rack. Right. Pick up the next pair, and you just work your way down. Yeah. But you don't have them all thrown out in your area. Um. But then you were saying like super setting machines. Yeah. So that's you have to look at the environment of the gym, like how busy it is at that any given time. If you have the whole gym to yourself, like, Oh yeah. Go nuts. He's not bothering anybody at that point. But still the standard rule is, is pick something in a superset that's near each other. Don't pick four machines that are on opposite corners of the gym and then run around. Mm -hmm. Um, that's not cool either. No. Uh, And also just know if you leave your weight on there and I don't see you around, like I'm going to take it. Yeah. Because like, People leave it all. How am I supposed to know you're using the chest press machine? Right. You're not anywhere near it, and you're overdoing leg extensions. How am I supposed to know you're using the chest press? Right. No, I'm going to take it now. Yeah. And and again, I understand a lot of you are crunch for time, but just figure out a more efficient way to I, I get it. You only got 30 minutes to get this done. Just figure out a plan before you just wing it and throw off everybody else's. Yeah, figure because out because their plan. time is just as valuable as yours. Take less, take less rest. Yeah. Take less rest as well. Like if your time is really that big of an issue that you're going back and forth between all of these, then find ones that are close and take less rest. Right, and so that'll make it quicker for you to get in and, and get out, and it also help other people get access to those machines. Right, and you know, there's always those people that spend freaking hour on one thing and i'm sorry unless you're some guy that's 270 pounds yoked and purposely doing it for a reason Mm -hmm. you you, there's no reason for you to do that yeah generally that guy will be the first one to let you work in or or let you use it and come back because he knows he's going to be there and he's not he's not so order we've got the hoarding thing covered and the superset so that was cool that just kind of worked in with um that while we're on dumbbells Quit dropping the dumbbells. All right. Now that's within reason. Right. Um, don't get me wrong. You're throwing the 130s around. That's different. That person is not throwing the dumbbells down to look cool. I'm not trying to die. They're, 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 they're setting them down hard because it's a safety issue for their shoulders. Mm-hmm. Um, they're not doing it to look cool. They're already pressing 130s, 140s. Like they don't, they don't need to look cool. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, I felt so bad the other day. Yeah. 
What was that yesterday? Yeah, the, the bull <laughs> I broke him once and, and, and that happens. Um, yeah, but I, I just told you, like, dude, I'm sorry. I can't let him down gently. It's no, good. and I would rather change a bolt head out yeah. than you tear a rotator cuff. Yeah. Um, so, again, if you're slinging around 100 and up pound dumbbells, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the, the, the gym bro that's using 40s and does 26 reps, and then you decide to just throw them down for Or they're days. deadlifting 135, and they just – Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're just damaging right. equipment, and now nobody's, including you, is going to be able to right. use it. You're tearing it up, and then you're attracting attention – but you're getting negative attention. Just understand that. Yeah. Nobody thinks you're cool doing that. Like if you're. Yeah. And then this, this one kind of leads into the next one. Um, it's usually the same people that are throwing dumbbells around that are the moaners, the, mo- the moaner <laughs> bros. We're gonna to, hold on. We're going to start. <laughs> <Yeah>. oh, <fuck. laughs> Speaking of moaning. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's start that over. You sure. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Gotta keep my legs out. <laughs> oh no, we're leaving that in there. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's it? Friday, Wednesday. I'm in here working, and I hear I hear this. I'm like, I need to go downstairs because you heard him from up here. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, if what is happening down in the gym sounds like what's happening, I need to go down there and put an end to this. Who's having it? Who is fucking in the gym? Yeah. So from up here, it sounded it sounded like a dude was trying to fuck a porcupine. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, uh, it was an equal mix of pain and pleasure. Like, and it was loud. I'm like, what the fuck? Dude? Like, there's kids that come in here. So, <laughs> so I go down the stairs. Go down the stairs. There's nobody in the fucking gym. It's just this dude. It's like mid twenties. Guess what he's doing? Doing single arm bicep curls on the cable machine. I can't even make the noise. I don't even know how to make. I, I, I can't even imitate the noise. And he sees. He finishes that, and of course, he like lets go of the handle to like let the weight stack drop. So, and there's nobody in the gym. Like, what was the point of it? Who are you impressing? And he he lets he lets it go, and then he finally sees me come downstairs, and he and he's like he smiles at me, and he's like, hey, and I'm like. What are you doing? Are you fucking the equipment? <laughs> and he's like, what, what, do you, what do you mean? I'm like, you need to take your headphones off and listen to yourself, dude. Like, seriously. It, not cool. Like, n- what are you doing that for anyway? No, Attention? And, I, and <laughs> no, that's just so, it's so stupid. And it's a lot of like quit with the freaking moaning. Like, well, you the attention that you should attract in the gym should be from your performance. Not from the noises you're making, and you shouldn't be making noises anyways, because then you're, now you're losing, now you're losing your air. Yeah. <laughs> I yell at people. Yeah. There goes your IAP. Quit, quit um, talking. <laughs> yeah, and again, we're not talking about the occasional grunt or like your air coming out or. Right, it it happens, but doing. I'm talking about the. I mean, it sounds like an OnlyFans account down there. Like, like stop. It's not so painful. You have to scream. No, it's and, not. You're you're not getting stabbed. Right. It's, or if you tear something or something breaks, that's yeah, different. I understand why you're screaming, but if you're just sitting there doing bicep curls, no, it does not hurt that bad. No, okay. and it definitely doesn't sound like an orgy. <laughs> <laughs> like just stop. <laughs> like take your headphones off, listen to yourself, or put your phone on record. Listen to yourself work out. And then you won't ever do it again. If you're louder just, than the music, there's an issue. Yeah, but just stop. There's no, there's no reason. I, I don't even know where else to take that. <laughs> I don't know either. Yeah. That's still funny. Just stop. You're better off getting no attention than that negative attention. Um, saving equipment. This one I don't see too bad in here. Um, you do see in some gyms. It's okay to save equipment. Like you're going to the drinking fountain. Like, right. leave your phone or your headphones or your towel. That's different. You're gone for 30 seconds and you're back. Putting your towel and your headphones on a piece of equipment and going to take a shit is different. Entirely. Yeah, that's, that's not allowed. So I'm going to throw your shit and I'm going to take your machine. Right. Um, that's And that's also rude to everybody else that's paying to have access to the gym, too. 
like I said earlier, if somebody is not around for a certain period of time, I'm I'm taking that. Anything else saving equipment? Why I don't. I think that's about yeah for a general gym. Yeah, yeah. Um, when somebody's on a machine, this is another issue that people don't really know what route to go. So I'm going to tell you what I do, and then what you personally do. It's up to you and your confidence level and how much how comfortable you are in dealing with other people. Um, so the typical, what I see a lot of is people will just immediately walk up and go, how many sets you got left? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and out of a uh, just sheer response now, like be like, I got 12 sets left. Yeah. You know, or somebody will throw something stupid out, you know, unless it's their last set. If it's your last set, you don't care. You're like, yeah. I got one more, bro. You have it. But what I have noticed is when people, <laughs> people will ask people in this tone of voice, like the person that was already there first and using that equipment is somehow inconveniencing them. Yeah. And so the way they ask it is it really is going to determine how rude my reply is to you. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, so if it's somebody that's just nice, like, you know, they're, they're nice about it. They're not, they're not being rude. I'm going to give them an honest answer. Mm -hmm. But if, if they come to me in that, you know, rude you're tone, ruining, yeah. Yeah. Like you're ruining my workout. Uh, I'm not, uh, shit. I got 14 more sets. Dude. Yeah. And okay. I will do all 14 more sets now. Yeah. Because, and now, me off. and now my 14 sets with the 14 sets of 20. Yep. Just on purpose. And it's not, and it's just because they just had to be rude. Yeah. It like, was all in their tone. Like that's just yeah. literally like, for some reason that irks me so much because why are you rude to people in the gym? There's why are you rude to people with no reason? So taking a rude tone with each other off the bat, whether I know what you're doing or not, you know, is we're all a very select group of people that, that choose to go and work out. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a small percentage of general population. So, this is kind of like a second church for all of us, a second home. Mm -hmm. You know, any, any good gym is like a second home or church to everybody. Why wouldn't we all just be in a good mood and be willing to help each other and not be rude to each other? Cause this is like the one place where we can interact that way and not be dickheads to each other. Like the rest of society is the rest of the time. And if you really like, if it's really that big of a deal, you can ask to work in with them too. So that's where I was going with a second. Yeah. Yeah. Can I? Yeah. Because that person has, for the moment, their rights to that equipment. They do. Um, and when you do ask to work in, um, I would say the one thing, too, is bear in mind what piece of equipment is. So it's really easy to work in on, like, a cable stack where you can just change yeah. the pin in two seconds, boom, 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 boom. Um, and even a lot of plate loaded stuff, it's not that hard to take a quarter off or a plate off uh, a hammer yeah, a hammer line or anything like that. Where I would say is if somebody's doing, like, plate loaded squat, leg press, something like that, where if you're trying to work in – uh, you, if if Peg is trying to work in with John on the leg, big John on the leg press, John not being rude is like, no, well, I'm not going to strip 23 plates every time it's your turn. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's not, not being insulting or being rude. It's just, it's not, it's not good time management. Right. Um, it's going to take me longer to do that if I would have just finished. Right. And then let you take it over. Yeah. The other thing that I would, um, and this does help gym culture. So you're on bench. I don't know you, or we just know each other from the gym. Right. I go over like, Hey, you know, I talk to you. Hey, how many more sets you got? You're like, I just got here. I'm on my second set. So knowing that I want that, I want that bench as soon as he's done, I'm just going to ask him, like, I'm going to go and do some other stuff. Will you come get me when you're done with the bench? Or will you let me know? Let me know when you're doing about let, to do your last set. So yes. I can come over there. Because that person will, once you have a working relationship with them, and again, you may not even know their first name, but you're used to seeing them in the gym all the time. Mm -hmm. They are going to, before they're done, they're going to leave their shit on the bench. Mm -hmm. They're going to come get you. That way you can come over there before anybody else takes it. And so that's a good thing to like start doing with people that are on your same gym cycle. Like meaning that guy always comes in at 430 around same the time, time I do, well, whatever. You can start doing that. And then now you're helping each other because he'll be doing his lap pull downs and he'll just look across the gym and be like, exactly. You know, and then it starts clicking, but, which is why like 5am in here is an awesome time. 
Right. Because everybody's clicking. But the, and, uh, even that, dudes that don't know each other. That comes also with the, how we just talked about being respectful, right. and not being rude. Like if you're rude, people aren't going to do that for you. Like yeah. people being nice goes a long way and people will let you do stuff. Yeah. Like, and they're willing to work with you. Like, like they, they, they'll, yeah. Yeah. Um, So we covered that. Yeah, sit working in. Um, the big three. So you're not going to see this in like a regular Purple Planet or thing like that. But when you're in a real a real gym or an old school gym or an athletic training facility, uh, you're going to hear like the big three referred to a lot, which is squat, bench, and deadlift. Yeah. So when you're in those environments, like around, around power racks, around benches and stuff, just – there's, there's several rules, but for everybody else just working out in the vicinity, there's really only three main rules that is going to piss off a lister. Um, is stay out of their bubble. So meaning don't, don't be piled on top of them while they're trying to lift. No. Um, especially like on bench and squat. Um, because it makes them feel unsafe knowing that anybody could walk into their barbell at any time. Mm -hmm. And when you've got that much weight in your hands or on your back, it, it's just not a comfortable feeling. No. Um, and you're also not one of their spotters, so they already don't trust you. You know what I mean? Right. So just stay out of the bubble. Um, don't walk into their line of sight. And by meaning, uh, we have visual points that we look at for, I'm not going to get into all the specifics, but for our head position, neck position, where we want to keep our sternum. So we have sp specific places picked out for mm -hmm. us to stare at. When you walk through those, it throws us off. It, it, and, it, it, and it messes like where your eyes go. Yeah. Your everything body else is going to follow. So it could break down a lift and it's not like, Oh, I'm too important for you to walk in front of me. It's not that it's a, it's an actual safety issue. Yeah. Um, and you can have people walking. It, it will happen from time to time. It's not the end of the world. Just try not to. And it generally it's, they're doing one or two heavy reps. Just wait the 10 seconds and then walk by. Yeah, And, and, and like, if you need to walk around, just, just walk far enough out of their line of sight that you're not like a billboard going by. And, and for a lot of you guys, you see a female squatting. It doesn't mean you're like Captain Sabo and you need to come run to the rescue. No. She probably knows how to squat. Better than you do. Yeah. <laughs> so don't get me wrong. I'm not saying don't keep other lifters in the gym in your peripheral for safety. Of right. course, if they're something happens, you want to be able to react, mm -hmm. but you don't need to just go run over there and spot her now if um, I and run up behind her in the mirror yeah. and scare the crap out of her. If I say, well, I'll wait. Yeah. Uh, and the last thing for the big three is before their lift, leave them alone. Dude. Just quit talking to them while they're trying to get in their heads. They're, they're trying to work out stuff in their head. Leave them alone. Every time you interrupt them, they have to start that process over again, mm -hmm. which is why, you know, when I lifted heavy in a public gym, which I haven't had that problem. Well, <laughs> um, I would have headphones in, but they wouldn't even be on. And it's so people would just not talk to me. Yeah. So just don't talk to them right when they're getting ready to go for a heavy lift. Just, I, just, just let them do their thing and talk to them afterwards, but not, not before the lift. I, um, Next is not giving unsolicited advice. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a big one. So again, like we were talking about, if it's a safety issue, that's not, we're not talking about unsolicited advice. That's a, that's a, you're trying to keep that person safe. The but generally the big offenders are guys trying to mm -hmm. teach girls, teach girls. And then you watch the guys lift and it, like, dude, you look like a giraffe taking a dump. Mm -hmm. You don't even know how to lift. Mm -hmm. So the biggest rule, just if they don't ask, just don't give it. No, like, like this, this is our literal job and we don't do it to people, right. I don't just random it. people. Yeah. Um, if somebody asks me all day long, I'll sit there and give them whatever, whatever they want to know. Right. Or whatever they, whatever questions they have, I'll let them ask all but day long. Asked. Yeah. Right. They came to you. You didn't go right. force yourself. If on I them. see somebody messing something up and that's, and they're not one of my people that I'm supposed to like actually be like, you're messing up. Right. Um, I just, yeah, I have to let it go even though I really don't want to sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> the other thing too is a lot of just, uh, gym members, you, you think somebody's doing something wrong, but you may not understand why mm -hmm. and what they're doing. 
So yeah, you might think, why is this, why is this guy doing it this way? But you don't understand. He's got two bum shoulders and a, and a rebuilt elbow. Yeah. So what he's not doing is incorrect. He's doing what works for him for pain management and he can still get some of the benefits out of it. It doesn't mean he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. Yeah. And pe people don't realize that you can change things so you don't hurt. Right. Um, or they just don't know the exercise out. Right. Um, or the 26 variations of any given exercise. Like, somebody was like, what? I was doing JM presses and they're like, well, that's not how you do skull crushers. Like, yeah, like, right. Cause it's not a, it's not a skull crusher. Right. Or bench press. It's, yeah. It's JM press. It's an Eventually. Here's the thing. If you know what you're doing, that person will eventually probably come to you anyway. Mm -hmm. So just let time again, if they're not doing something that's going to get them hurt, just okay. they'll eventually come to you. If, if you're, advice is that great they'll probably end up asking you anyway so um the stare people that stare in the creepers mm. it's it's nobody likes to be stared at first of all in general no you know but like no. like yeah when you're still staring at a female they it, that's just uh, it's, when you're staring at somebody, you're looking to to hurt them. Right. Like that's that like that's what I think when I catch somebody staring at me, or, if they want to hurt me. Or, or if it's a female, you just look like a fucking predator. Yeah, that hurting them. Yeah, that's what I mean. Um. So, and I get the occasional stare. Again, like you're doing a, a an exercise somebody's never seen before. Mm -hmm. They're just trying to figure it out. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's not. You could generally tell that type of, you know, and that's a. Two, that's a one minute stare. Yeah. It's not an entire workout stare. Right. Um, there's not really any reason to stare or creep on a girl. I mean, I, in fact, I threw a guy out not too long ago for that. Um, As you should. Yeah. Because uh, it's either throw you out or you're going to end up getting the crap kicked out of you at some point. Yeah. You know? Um, so. Yeah. One, if you're gonna if you're gonna stare at a girl and creep on her because she's attractive, well, just fundamentally know you're a piece of shit. But two, eventually <laughs> she's gonna feel awkward and not mm -hmm. safe and go somewhere else. And so you're literally you're ruining your own environment. Yeah. Um. Yeah, you're just being a, you're just being a loser. Uh, it's fucking weird. Stop yeah, sending all the chicks. Like yeah, like stop. that's not what you're in here to do anyway. Um, you should be trying to better yourself so they look at you. Yes, yeah. and, <laughs> and you get to catch. Yeah, me. and you're going to get a reputation anyway, and it's not going to be long before everybody ostracizes you, and we eventually make you move on anyway. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just it's just not it's not how you be a good human being anyway. No, you just don't do stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, and I mean, obviously, one of our biggest things here is like making females comfortable. Yeah. Right. It's one of the biggest things we do here yeah. because it's not it's not okay for us to just let those types of things happen. And we're not. And if one of those things did happen under our like supervision, I guess you could say, or yeah. like under our watch, you know, that that person's not going to end up. You're going to have a bad spot. day. Yeah. yeah. At best, you're going to have a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> What's next? Um, talking on yourself in the middle of the gym floor. In the middle. That one just That's makes me want to slap people. I'm not talking about your phone rings and you step off to the side or out to the lobby area or, you know, somewhere out of everybody's way. I'm not talking about that. But the people that are on machines or in the middle of the gym floor, like talking on their cell phone. Mm -hmm. Like, I, it's kind of like the people that text and drive. Like, they're, you, nobody is that important where you can't Perfect. step away. For a step away, right? Yeah, step away for a minute. Like you don't get to inconvenience everybody else because you feel you're so important that you need to talk to whoever mm -hmm. at that particular point. Um, but no, I get it. Like a, a lot of times, your your kids are with babysitters or they're getting picked up from school or something. There could be emergencies. Yeah, before. emergencies happen. But just when you get on the phone, go move off to the side. Mm -hmm. Just get out of the way. And it, but, I don't know why. I think people are just so infatuated with themselves. They think being on their phone makes them feel important. I don't know. Literally, everybody has a phone. 
Like people in third world countries have a cell phone. It doesn't make you cool. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Maybe in like the what? When did phones come out? Like 40, 50? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, if you had like an old bag phone and you whipped that out in the gym, I would say shit to you. I'd be like, all right. Yeah, yeah. That, that dude's cool. Yeah. You're trolling everybody. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, people that, uh, Get on their cell phones while doing cardio. That doesn't bother me though, because it, it, it's an individual space. That's why I think. Yeah, and I think. Yeah, I don't know. It's, because it's like you have to think like all the treadmills are individual. You, you're yeah. not getting on a treadmill with somebody. You're not walking right. by them really. Um, I mean, like I'll watch podcasts on a treadmill. Oh, totally. on a bike, but I can't do that while I'm working out. No, I'm like my thing with the phone on the cardio is if you're doing actual cardio you shouldn't be able to talk oh you know i just thought about watching your phone i i forgot what you were saying about talking on the phone oh no, some people will be just bluetooth talking the whole time it's like that's, that's great but you know you can walk outside for free yeah. you're not doing cardio you're not even breathing hard yeah so but that's a whole nother rant that's not really all i was saying is for some for some reason if somebody's on machines and they're on their cell phone it triggers me it's annoying, but if they're on a treadmill, it doesn't bother me. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm fucked up. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I can kind of see it. I just think it's because it's not in anybody's space. It's yeah. Like, the, the main thing is, is when you're in the middle of the gym floor, you're on a machine, people think you're talking to them and mm -hmm. everybody gets confused for a minute and mm -hmm. they're like, oh, it's that dude that's talking to his baby's mama or whatever it is. You know, <laughs> that dude again. Uh, take a... <laughs> I saw this one the other morning. Take a bench for all your crap. So have you seen? <laughs> and then they will use an entirely different bench to do the work. They're not even using the bench. Yeah, oh, they're like, here's my bag. Here's my my pre workout oh, wow. for my pre workout, and then all their shits laid out. And you're like, and then they're twelve feet away doing something else. And you're like, yeah. Okay. No, I. A lot of gyms have locker rooms. If not. Put your bag off to the side where you can keep an eye on it. Carry it with you. And carry it, with, carry it around with you. Like, you don't need to take up a machine yeah. to hold your nasty gym. Like, all of our, I'm not saying your shit's nasty. Everybody's gym shit's nasty. Yeah. It's dirty. It's, you use it in the gym. It's full of sweat and mm -hmm. sometimes blood and a little bit of pee, too, depending <laughs> on how hard you work out. Um, so, throw it on the floor. Nobody. Yeah. 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 Well, like, uh, again, back when I was at college, I had my gym bag and... I put it off to the side, right. into this spot, um, and that's where it would sit the mm -hmm. entire time. If I needed something out of it, I would go grab it. If I didn't need it anymore, I'd put it back. Right. And you don't, you, there's no point in in having your stuff laid out. This isn't your home. It's not a home. Even though it feels like a second home, it's still not your home. Mm -hmm. um, somebody owns this place, and you don't just get to decide where you put your stuff and what you do. Um, yeah, and I to an extent. Yeah, to an extent, but uh, I mean, unless you're in like a really small like studio gym, mm -hmm. you know. But any commercial, you know, gym, there's plenty of places to throw your bag along a wall or by the stairs or like oh, or drag it around with you. Like it's not bothering you. We're in the locker room. Yeah, um, and plenty of people have bags because that are with them all the time anyway. Especially if you're in here in the morning, is hell half the gym's full of Leos. Mm -hmm. Ninety percent of the gym is carrying weapons. Mm -hmm. So everybody has bag like it's just nobody freaks out about it. It's just and nobody's bags in anybody's way. Mm -mm. You know, it, just don't take up a piece of equipment with it. No, so, um, you better be using it. Yeah, if you're gonna put something yeah. there. Um. All right, next one. This will be a good one because me and you talk about this stuff quite a bit. Uh, this comes in and just being decent human beings. Mm -hmm. Um, we need to stop. Or don't just negatively judge or look down on other people in the gym for where they're where they're at at any given time in their in their life or in their right. in their overall fitness or health. Um, yeah, I think we do. I think our gym's pretty good, mm -hmm. um, but you know, as the strength bearers, we work very hard at specifically at that type of atmosphere where mm -hmm. we don't condone that shit. Right. Um, and I think 
well, I can say, because I've been in gyms my whole life, you know, 25 years all over the country, even in other countries, but there's still, there's still room for improvement. Like until we hit perfection, it's something we should still always try and Mm -hmm. get better at. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think it also comes back to, we're all in, we're all in the same boat here. Like we're all in here to help each other or watch each other get better or, or help each other in some way. We're all trying to get better. Yeah. Like there's not, I don't, I've never heard somebody go into the gym. That's like, I'm trying to get worse. I'm now trying to become healthier. Right. Um, and really when people are negatively judging, it's because they're jealous of what somebody else is doing or they want to make themselves feel better. Um, and I don't think there's anything wrong. With we went there. Okay. We went there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong with jealousy of something else in this aspect. Cause if you squat a thousand pounds, yeah, I want to squat a thousand pounds. It's a competition aspect and it's going to make me better. But trying to make yourself look better for what purpose is, is your ego really that low that you need to bring somebody else down to bring you up or are you trying to make yourself look better and some to impress somebody else and bringing somebody else down along the way? Like, Oh, they can't do that, but I can. Right. Um, and in reality, we're all the same and different. So we're all, like we said, we're all here to do the same thing, but we're also all in different stages. So there's exactly. no, there is no reason you should be worried that that person is 200 pounds overweight, unless you're, they're a client of yours or they're a friend of yours. Like there's, you guys have a relationship. If I don't have a relationship with you, I should not be worried about you being 200 pounds overweight. No, the only thing I should be doing is supporting you. Right. I should be happy as a random gym. Owner. I should be happy that you are trying to better yourself and that you are coming in here to try and change something about your life. Um, if you, here, here's how I feel, because we're going to, um, you, you hit several nuggets and I'm trying to keep mentally track of them because <laughs> there's about nine roads I want to go down mm-hmm. just in the last few phrases that you said. But before I forget, because I do want to touch on this, uh, for overweight people, uh, personally, at, at, and I'm going to go ahead and say, you say this, I'm going to allow you to, you know, you could chime in here, but it's very motivating to me. I, I like to see. I don't like to see overweight people. I like to see overweight people doing bettering something about themselves. it, bettering themselves. That's motivating to me. Mm-hmm. And they might feel the opposite. They're like, no, you're motivating to me, but like, no, like what you're doing is harder than what that's I'm doing. mentally hard. You're yeah. You're, like, you're doing something that's harder than what I'm doing. Like, I, this, this is, it's not hard for me because I I'm doing it every day and it's not, right. it's not a change to me. It's not anything different. It's a lifestyle. I don't know any different at this mm-hmm. point. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the same Yeah, for you. It's an entirely new, different realm and your brain's probably freaking the fuck out. Not only is it physically hard for you, it's just mentally, mentally the fear factor, the intimidation, like all that stuff. Yeah. So I'm like, no, you're doing some boss shit. Like you're motivating. Yeah. Like, the only time I think it'll be okay to when, whenever I judge something is, is, is an effort issue. Um, that's, those are the things that totally. actually irk me because if I see you not, there's obviously different intensity levels for different ages and different people, you know, but I want to see like overall. Yeah. I want to see effort in the gym yeah. and it all depends. It depends on where you're at in life too. But a huge point uh, of where you have to do in life, uh, because a lot of people can't be bothered because again, they're so into themselves that they don't, they don't understand what's going on around them. And we get to see this from the coaching aspect. And again, all these things are very motivating and the people that inspire me are not the serious lifters or the best physiques. No. Um, at any given day in this gym, there is somebody coming in to do a workout who's buried a child. Yeah. Like, and they're only in their thirties. And this is what's like, keeping them. Like the from- parent is in their 30 something and they've already buried a child. Mm-hmm. There's people in this gym every day that have gone through shit that you, I can't even say. On and this like, podcast. there's, <clears throat> it makes me wonder if I am capable of doing that. And it makes them, it, it, it just really makes me think of like, that person's better than me because they're doing this. And I don't know if I could. So that's, what's motivating. They're like, mm-hmm. if that person found a way to get past all this shit, and then decide like, Hey, I want to better myself. I'm going to go yeah. on to this next step. 
<clears throat> not only is that fucking cool as hell, mm-hmm. but that's motivating. That's isn't that the whole point of what we're all here for to like help each other. Mm-hmm. Um, at any given time, there's, uh, you know, you have a client that has 13 children. Homeschools yeah. 12 of them. Yeah. And they're all under the ages of 14. Yes, I said that. She, <laughs> Jane has a client. She has, her and her husband have 13 children. 12 of them are homeschooled. If she can find time time to work out, everyone has time. I don't care what any... I'll have people tell me <laughs> they don't have flipping time to work out. That lady does not have time. And yes, she has missed... Zero workouts. Zero workouts in the days that she did have to change, right? Like there's some days she technically missed, like on a Friday, she'll switch it to a Thursday. Yeah, so that's not a miss. That's a reschedule. Yeah. yeah, no, that's just all it is. Yeah. And she, shout out Jackie. <laughs> <laughs> um, she, I don't like hearing I don't have time anymore because that is a prime example. Right. Um, people are like, oh, I have job in school. So, so do I. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like I have the same thing. I I have to eat too. Right. I have to. Well, guess what? I just sleep a little less. Yep. It is what it is. It is. Um, and, you know, there's, there's people in here that have beat terminal cancer. There's, I mean, I, I, I could throw out examples all yeah. day, but the point is. Stop, the, looking the ne- down. stop looking down and judging others because. You don't know what's exactly going on. With them. You don't know what's going on. You don't know the background. But and you don't need to know it's not your freaking business no. unless that person decides to share it with you. But the main thing is you haven't lived enough life if you do not realize we're all one incident or moment in time away from being that person. Mm-hmm. I'm one bout of cancer away mm-hmm. from being that chubby guy that everybody makes fun of or the super skinny guy that everybody mm-hmm. makes fun of. I'm one car accident away. I'm one anything. One bad anything, we're, and we all are. There's, yeah, we're all one moment in time away from being that person that you look down on. Yeah, and this is just going out for random, like when you don't know these people. Yeah, but like obviously, you know, we'll make fun of the people we're friends with, but it's not. That's it's yeah. not even in a judgmental way. It's a way of us expressing that we like each other. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's how real men talk to each other. Yeah. Like and give each other shit, you know, that that's just how we get thick skin. Yeah. And you know, and I intentionally do that too. And you do it too, to the, the male high schoolers, because mm-hmm. they need to learn like how you talk in a locker room and how you talk in mm-hmm. a gym and how to get thick skin and not take everything so personal. So we're not doing it to hurt their feelings. We're doing it to help them grow as a human. Right. Uh, because there's going to be a lot of people that hurt your feelings, but there's no, there's never any point in time where that kid or person thinks they don't care about me or, they don't have my best interest in mind. No. They always know that. No. Everything I do is for the best interest. Right. But something that, like, I want to go back on is that jealousy aspect, too. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm glad you brought that back up because I forgot. About that. Because I think jealousy is in a good thing in the sense of I want to become better, but it's not good in a mad way. Like, I don't like that person now. Jealousy can be a motivator. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because, okay, so let's take, um, let's take, Again, the, at the go, let's go to that deadlift party where John out pulled me by five pounds. Mm-hmm. And you, you know what people are asking me? Are you mad John out pulled you? It's like, f- no. First of all, he's my training partner. Right. I want him to get better. Yeah. Second of all, I told him he's not a lot of timey. And so if he beats me, that means I still have to get better. Right. Am I jealous John beat me? The answer is yes. I want to beat him. But I'm not mad at him. Right. I'm not mad. Are you mad John went to 805? Only 805? What do you mean only 805, first of all? Right. And second of all, I could have went to 810. I could have taken another one. Yeah. But I didn't. I could have I could have done whatever I want. Yeah. I could have went to 805 first and made him go to 810. Right. And I didn't. And so, no, I'm not mad. I'm jealous that he outpulled me. But I don't hate the guy because he did better than I did. No, and it's that's just a, better. And that's a healthy way to look at jealous. That's how it's supposed to that's be. That's how it should be. Yeah. Um, just like, you know, if we're out in town and a nice Bugatti passes us, you're going to get jealous. I'm but done. if that motivates you to start an extra business or get more extra income and get one, then what was, what was wrong with that? Right. But I'm not going to hate that guy. No, you don't, I don't hate him for his success. Right. That's what small people do. But the, yeah, the jealousy thing. Mm. Um, 
that's a big one. Um, Because, you know, as we covered earlier, we're all here to grow, Mm -hmm. you know, and you can only grow. You can only grow so much physically without mentally growing. And I think a lot of people don't understand that comes along with it. Yeah. Because your mind is still a limiting factor. Well, your in, mind has to in grow sports, a lot in, all, in athletics, everything. Your your mind has to be strong and, for you to continue to grow. And there's no reason these people shouldn't be trying to grow their mind every day. Um, no, but yeah, that again, that's a a cultural problem that we're in right now. Is you know people just check out and they they're basically just waiting to die. And it's like no, there's there's still a whole bunch of life out there um, that you can get involved in. You know, mm-hmm. like. 40 is not old, dude. Sorry. <laughs> I hate that. It's your midlife, actually. Yeah. You're in the middle. Like, yeah. Um, anything else on that one? I think we covered that one no. pretty good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> selfies and video is the next <laughs> one. I don't think they're wrong. I think how people react when they get messed up is wrong. I think when and how they choose to use them is wrong. Yeah. I um, think that's a better explanation. So for a lot of people, they don't see it because we're on the other side, but we video all the time, mm-hmm. um, especially squats, anything that's heavy. Uh, we're going to, we're going to video and it's not so we can sit there and just look at it and watch ourselves over and over and tell us, tell ourselves how great we are. Get my stuff it's we're slowing it down so we can see where things broke down, yeah. where we could get better. We're looking at technique. We're looking at little micro adjustments that we can do to squeak more weight out. Because a lot of people don't understand too, like moving heavy weight is 50% being strong and 50% technique. Yeah. So it's, it's cheatable. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's why we're videoing. Not that there's anything wrong with videoing a set of doing flies. There's nothing wrong with that either. Yeah. Um, I've, I have become very, I've become, not, I don't want to say very strong, moderately strong because I've watched so many videos on myself and I have broken my technique down so much right. that now I know how everything works right. and then I don't even need a video to know when I have to tweak something. But, but I think a lot of people think that we're, we're videoing so we can watch ourselves like we're in love with ourselves. Like we're getting that dopamine hit and no. when it's the opposite. We're tearing ourselves up. We're looking for negative stuff. Right. And, but there are people that are, do do that. Though. No, I yeah. agree. Um, but that's not why we athletes and lifters do it. No. Like we're we're looking to find mistakes. It's like watching your own game film to because yeah. you love the way you play. It's like no, I'm. Our coach tells us to watch our our game film, right? Because we're supposed to see what we did wrong. No, what did yeah. I do wrong in this play? Right. How do I fix it? Not. Oh my gosh, look at yeah. myself run. Somebody's like, oh, you squatted eight hundred five. That's awesome. And you're like, no, like look what here. I broke down here. This was bad. I need to get better here. Right. Like that's why we're doing it. And you either you either have to have a video or a coach that can see those things. Right. Because if you don't, you'll, how are you supposed to get past sticking points if you don't know? Yeah. And it too, it depends on the, the, the coaching level that mm-hmm. the, the <laughs> depends on the eye mm-hmm. of the coach. So there's sometimes where we can see five things happen wrong at once. Mm-hmm. And then there's sometimes where something is, there's one thing so out of place that we miss the other two things. Mm-hmm. So it's always good to have a video backup. Just well, and it's so hard to watch like you and John. Like I can watch, right. and sometimes I'll catch something when John. But when you guys are like something's wrong, and I can't figure. Like I'll I'll just watch a video and I'll slow motion, mm-hmm. it, and that's what it takes to figure it out yeah. because I don't know right. at the moment. And especially too when it's when you're talking about super heavy. If they hip shift in a squat, you're not necessarily going to see it with a blind eye. No, like, you have to slow it down. Yeah. Um. So video, video, selfies, all that kind of stuff. People are pretty good here. Um, there were some girls yesterday. They wanted to take a bunch of selfies. So they went after their workout. They went in the back room mm-hmm. and did it where they didn't bother me. That's perfect. Like, don't go, go to the do bathroom. That. Go back there, ladies. Stop <laughs> taking selfies in the. <laughs> I did, I went on like a tip five minute rant peg the other day. I'm like, why do you guys do that? She doesn't do it, but. I'm like, why do women do this? He's like, I have no idea. Because they don't want to be okay. They don't want to be looked at in person. I know, but they're totally okay with it on social media. But when there's a freaking shitter in the background, <laughs> like <laughs> to me, that's what is worse. Like, oh, look at her. Oh, and she's trying to highlight a certain thing, and it's like, okay, yeah, there's there's a, there's a toilet. And right I'm gonna be honest, with you, the lighting in the bathroom is not better than the lighting on the leg. No, deck. the lighting on the leg deck is peak, dude. Go up there and go take up there and do it. 
Um, yeah, ladies, quit taking selfies in the bathroom. Like, it, it's, <laughs> I'm trying to think of the like m- male equivalent, but they, no, they do the same thing. But I, I, I just scroll. Past, I don't even really look at the dudes. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any friends, so <laughs> kidding. But no, I see, it, I see it. I'll see it on Snapchat. I'll see. I'll walk in. Really? And I'll see people taking pictures. And I'm like, okay, you're going to post it on social media. Mm-hmm. Why don't you go do it out there? Where there's, first of all, better lighting and have a little bit of confidence out there. Right. Because having real world confidence is better for you than having social media and fake world confidence. Cool. Being able, I will take my shirt off in the gym because I have the comp, like there are guys that will take their shirts off and post it on social media and, and then get mad it. at me because I take my shirt off. Yeah. The gym. It's like, no, I have real world confidence. Right. And so I don't care about taking my shirt off in the gym. You will do it on social media. I actually do the opposite. I don't post yeah. like shirtless pictures on social media because I don't care about those. I'm not there for the attention. I don't care about those people on social media. So that's a good point. You brought up. guys do it too. So ladies, I already owe you an apology. So <laughs> I kept singled you out when it's really not. It's everybody. Everybody stopped taking selfies in the freaking toilet like, yeah. um yeah but so again we're going to come back to a societal problem is uh there's so many unvalidated human beings walking around that they need that social media dopamine hit so they can just feel okay for five minutes fuck that no and i agree <laughs> i agree like you don't even need to worry about working out. What you need to do is go do whatever validates you as a human being. Go travel the world. Go fight a war. Go fight a fucking bear. I don't know. Go whatever it takes. Purpose. Whatever it takes for you to be validated as a human being. Then it's, then you can come. Stop, back stop thinking that these people that look happy on social media are happy. No, it's such bullshit. And it's people are surprised when I'm like, they're like, yeah, you know that person. I'm like, yeah. I'm like they live on somebody's couch. Yeah. Like they're a fucking loser. But on social media, everybody thinks they're the shit. And it's like, no, I like, you don't see us post. You don't see either of us. Their life is a train wreck. Trust me. Yeah. I know them. We don't post anything about our life. Like we post content or sometimes you'll shout out somebody or stuff about the gym, but it's never like your personal. Look how great my life is. No. You know what I mean? Oh, no, no. And if it is, it's some, you know, I'll throw a lifting video on there every once in a while. But I mean, the last one I posted was. I was uh, locked into the belt squat and farted so bad, and I was gagging, and I thought and it was that's funny. funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's different. You know, right? And but it's because you know you don't need that attention in that that's fake well, the, social world because people don't know how to have real relationships. Yeah, and it's 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 a virtual world, and, and like I I want to I want to feel and partake of of real life. And most people don't, and I know you too. But the, here's the problem: real life's painful sometimes, yeah, and that's why it's so easy for people to check out. But I would rather feel real pain than some fake social media bullshit. The, the pleasure of real life is way better than yeah. virtual and fake. And, and if you, if you ha- again, if you haven't come to that realization, go you go live to, life. Go need to go, figure go find it. Like, yeah, it's out there. Um, selfies aren't. Crazy. So, so it's fine. Be respect. Be yeah. respectful. Um, Here's the thing: just don't don't set it up in everybody's way. Yeah, that's and then, be respectful about. Yeah, it. and then also, if you can see it, if somebody set it up in plain sight, um, Joey Swole does an awesome job of covering this all the time. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> um, if, you know, if your camera's on the ground or something, and we don't see it, like we can't see it, the gym floor is black. Most phones are not bright, mm-hmm. so don't get mad at somebody if they walk in front of your camera. Like, and if your phone's it. on the floor, I don't think you're videoing because right. I, I, just I use tripods. Yeah. So, um, and then also don't film somebody that you don't have permission to have their, well, to yeah. film them. there's no, um, yeah, there's no point. Yeah. Like, well, I, I hate when people are like, well, it's a public, it, what is the, they're like, I freedom of press. So yeah. They're allowed to, okay. Yeah. Is that an actual thing? Yeah. But, but that's like <laughs> that's like us considering us like we're professional radio hosts because I bought some microphones. You know what <laughs> right. I mean? Like, but the thing is, it's weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. weird. And so, and and that's and it seems like you're. Do you want somebody doing it to you? 
Yeah. No. Okay. Then apply the same rule. But I feel like you're making fun of me. If yeah. you're going to sit here and take a video of me and if I don't like you <laughs> or if I don't know you well enough for you to make fun of me because I'm not close with you, it's going to cause some issues. Yeah. And don't film girls. Don't film women in the gym. No. You, that, you're just an instant piece of shit. It doesn't matter if you don't, if you never share it or anything like that. Just, you know what you're doing. You're still a piece of shit. You're, you're, a, you're a freaking coward. <laughs> Cause you know, you're obviously interested enough to film her, but not go talk to her. So yeah. Yeah. You took staring to a new level. Yeah. <laughs> to creepo level. So now you're going to, now, now you're, you're worse than a creepo. Now you're going to stare at your phone later yeah. and just be even weirder. Yeah. In your mom's basement, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Covered in Cheeto stains. Clean clothes. It's just not smelling in general. Yeah. Like I'm amazed at the amount of people that do not take showers. Like there's a difference like when we between, have to put a sign up that says take showers. Yeah. There's a difference between like fresh BL. Fre yeah. Fresh versus and, a week old BL. Yeah. And, and you're in a gym, BL. like gyms are already a little, I mean, they can have a whiff of this or that. Like people are sweating and working out. It's not going to smell the, the, like a flower. Right. But it, the BO, I should, I should know you have showered in the past two days. Yeah. Your BO shouldn't make my eyes water <laughs> because it's molded on you for seven days. You got a fungus growing in there somewhere. Dude, like, like you don't even need a shower at that point. You just need covered in roundup. Like there's <laughs> shit growing on you. <laughs> oh, uh, gosh. So yeah, just clean clothes, you know, wash the pits out a little bit. Damn. Um, it, it's, What's also crazy about that is like dudes come in from work. They're not the ones that smell. No. It's not the guys coming in from the construction job to smell. No. And they're filthy. It's not those guys. It's the random basement dweller or whatever. Um, it <laughs> smells like old hot pockets in freaking sour pond water. <laughs> so along with uh, not showering is... Perfume mm. uh, and cologne, like okay, like keep that within reason too. Like people are trying to breathe in the gym again. A shower will <laughs> suffice to smell clean. Like I don't, I don't understand the people that want to smell like an actual fragrance over being smelling clean. I, I can get it a little bit, but I've always preferred smelling clean over a fragrance. Yeah, and they and also for you know, I'm married. I don't. Have to, I don't you I'm not really concerned. I'm, I'm not doing this anymore, but, um, like guys that are single or your age, like, especially when you have a lot of testosterone and you're at that age, women key to that. They don't, un they don't know it, mm -hmm. but they do. It's subconscious, but you give off pheromones. Mm -hmm. So by covering it, you're literally making yourself less attractive to a female. She might say she likes this type of cologne and she probably does but not to the point that it masks your own pheromones. Yeah, I don't Just quit doing it. <sighs> especially don't mask it with some fuck boy ax spray. <laughs> <laughs> the middle school shower. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow. That was a, that was six gallons of pert and ax body spray. <laughs> I have lung cancer now. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we talked about this earlier, the ass hole. Mm -hmm. Don't be the ass hole. Okay, ladies, this is typically never you. Um, is, yeah, this is typically guys. You know, it's typically always guys. And what's funny is the assholes don't ever think that us guys in the gym talk to each other. So when you come up and you ask you're having a problem or whatever, you're looking for a better workout or you're, you're trying to get your chest to grow or whatever it is, you'll come and ask somebody and they'll tell you something. And you don't like the answer. So you go to the next person, the next big guy, and you ask him. He tells you. And you go to the next person. Then you come to me. Then you go to Jaden. And then you end up doing none of it. So you really wasted all of our time and didn't do a single bit of the advice that was given you by people that have mm -hmm. obviously figured out the problem that you're having. Right. So if you're going to take up somebody's time, which generally most people in the gym that know what they're doing, they don't mind giving you advice. No. Just don't interrupt their workout. No, I don't care but at all. They generally will help you in the event that they don't want to help you. It's a lot to do with people like you because they're tired of wasting their breath. 
Mm -hmm. They're like, no, I've given you nine pieces of advice and you've done zero of them. So and, I'm done talking to you because you're just wasting my time. And it's not like it, it's not like you try it and you don't like it. So you give it up. That's you right. still tried. And like, we're seeing if it could be a beneficial thing, mm -hmm. but if you're just going to ask for advice and then completely disregard it entirely, like, yeah. Okay, you wasted my most valuable piece of thing I'll ever have. Yeah. I wasted it on you, and now you fucking threw it in the trash. Didn't even try it. I took 15 minutes to talk to you about something that took me 10 years to figure out. And then <laughs> you just threw it away and went on to the next person. So then the next time you come and ask us, that person is going to either, A, not, not help you, or they're going to tell you something totally wrong just to watch you humiliate yourself. <laughs> they're not going to give you something unsafe to do, but they're going to give you something. <laughs> they're going to do something funny yeah. that people are yeah. like, what the? And if you don't think like the top G's in the gym all talk to each other, like we do. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying we like call each other on the phone, but when we're in the gym BS and <laughs> we like, all say hi to each other. We're like, and don't say his name, but like we all know there's one. And we're like, yeah, did he come talk to you about this? And be like, yep. And then I'll ask, uh, you know, the big guy, mm -hmm. one of the big guys. And they're like, oh, yeah, he hit me up with that like two days ago. I'm like, yeah, okay. So save it. Um, or not save it, but if you're like, going to ask somebody for their genuine subject matter expertise, at least try it and apply yeah, it. Yeah. Most of your questions, though, that, that you guys come to us with, if you had just been patient and watched, if you had watched the guy that you're about to ask the question, Six out of your 10 questions would have been answered just by watching him and paying attention. That is the most important thing to do is watch. Yes. Now, okay, not in a creepy way. <laughs> no. Again, not in a creepy way, but I, or listening to when they talk to other people. Yeah. Um, and there's a non rude And you can eavesdrop way. without being a creep yeah, too. Yeah, there's a non-rude way to go about it because, and I'd, I'd say probably, I'd say probably close to 50 to 60% of the information I learned was through that way. Yeah. It was just through visual and, and listening to and, side conversations. Right. And so for the, the average Jim bro, you just, you just remove 60% of the dumb questions that you're about to ask mm -hmm. just by paying attention. Mm -hmm. So when we're not being bombarded with dumb questions, we're more, we're going to take more time with you because you have good questions. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing. Like what do your teachers and professors tell you? Like bring me good questions. Don't ask me something that you could have thought about for 11 seconds and came to the same conclusion. Yeah. You were just too lazy to think about it for 10 seconds. Put, put in a little bit of thought. Yeah. Like try to become a problem solver. <laughs> um, so the last one, save the best for last. Mm -hmm. Hitting on women in the gym. <laughs> <That's> not, <laughs> I don't know why I'm excited to do this one. I think it's just funny. That's all. You can go ahead. I'll let you start it out. Um, okay. Is there anything wrong with hitting on women in the gym? Not necessarily. It's, it's, it's public space. It's However, like hitting on a woman at a bar tech. Kind of uh, the same. Well, really. no, it's still different. It's still different, but because here's the thing. Yeah. Guys, if you are going to hit on a girl in the gym, you need to understand the, Duh, that sounded really dumb. Um, before you even just, just step back and think about it and put yourself in her shoes. And this is why it differs from like being at the bar or the club or a mm -hmm. church or that's, something yeah, like that. True. Most women do not feel sexy in the gym. Right? Like some of them are coming before work, after work. Um, their makeup might not be great. Mm -hmm. Their hair may not be the way they want it. They're sweating. They're breathing hard. They don't feel sexy in the gym. They don't. Yeah. Not always. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they, they don't. I, I'm not. I'm not going to speak for. I'm trying not to speak for women in this. I'm just trying to H have a man think. I'm trying to put myself in their shoes. Yeah. So realize like right there off the bat, and they think they smell, and they don't. But you know, <laughs> they're just they don't feel sexy. Okay, and they might feel a little bloated or like whatever. They don't feel great. So. You need to put that in your strategy bef before you say dumb shit and try to hit on them in the gym. Right. And there's also a right time, too. And there's the right things to say. And, but there's also, like, you know when right. you, first of all, sometimes there's signs when you can tell a woman doesn't want to be spoken to. 
Um, if she has her earbuds in and she's working out, don't go bother her in the middle of it. No. Um, um, and guys, if you don't know basic female body language, then you need to spend time learning that first. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, because there is ways that she will let you know that she doesn't want to talk to anyone or she's mm-hmm. open um, to communication. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I'm about to open Pandora's Go box on. here. Um, first off, a gym is a good practice space for some of you. Not, not you. I'm just, no, no. Um, <laughs> For a lot of email, it's a good practice space because you're just going to get annihilated, um, and you need to like you need to go through that. Like men need to go through that. Like I'm sorry, not men, boys, boys and males need to go through. Yeah, that you process. have to get rejected. Like rejection, it's got to happen. And here's the thing: you guys are. I keep saying you guys because I'm just I'm not talking to you. Uh, majority of you males, younger males, you, like you're so afraid of that rejection, and it's literally the stupidest thing in the fucking mm-hmm. world. It's okay for one. You're so you're not even afraid. You don't even know that you're afraid of the rejection. You're just too afraid to even communicate with them in the first place. Mm -hmm. If a girl's in the gym and you want to talk to her and you hit her up on snap, I hope she tells you, I hope she never gives you the time of day because you, you need one, you need to have a conversation with your left nut. So it'll finally drop. And then maybe your spine will come in, you know, eventually someday. (laughs) And then once you have some backbone, then maybe you could just go talk to her because she's 30 feet away. But you chose to hit her on DMs. Like that's a punk move. And and but you shouldn't be nervous. Like you you can't be nervous. Well, about anything it. new you're gonna be nervous about. But the thing about the rejection thing. Okay. Let's let's assume I'm not married. And I I go hit on my girl. I'll go try and talk to her. Mm-hmm. And she tells me just fuck off. Did that affect me in any way? Mm-mm. Like really? Did it affect my income? Did it affect how I live my quality of life? Did it af- did it really affect me in any way whatsoever? It might have hurt your in, feelings a little bit. in any tangible way. Did, did, does no. it matter? No, it's no. it's water off a duck's back. And I'm not saying I don't care what a stranger thinks. Um, <laughs> and I'm not saying there's not lessons to be learned there. Uh-huh. But there's 67 th- worst things happen to you in any given day than a girl telling you she's not interested in you. Yeah, because there's but your ego is so up here that you can't. Especially if it's a girl you don't know. Yeah. Like if you don't know her, okay, there's a lot of girls you don't know that are probably just as pretty or prettier that you can go try again with. And they might like your pickup line next time. The yeah. next girl might like it. Or well, they might say no again. Pickup lines are overrated anyway. I, I didn't mean like a pickup yeah, pick line. I, I, I just meant. Um, so just. Don't be a predator in the, yeah. in the gym. Um, and for you, for you guys that are interested in women that are in the gym, um, one, don't come ask me. I, that shit pisses me off. Because when that girl comes and asks me about you, I'm going to tell her. Because I have had, they'll be like, hey, who's that girl over there? Or do you know her? Like, that girl that's right there. <laughs> that's right there. Right there. That girl. Are you that girl? speaking about her? <laughs> she's not a polar bear. Like she's not gonna like. <laughs> she's not gonna rip her out. Yeah. Like, like, dude, just go talk to her. Like, like punk. <laughs> um. So one, you, I've already ruined you right there. Because if she ever asked me about you, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, he asked you, but he didn't have the balls to come talk to you. Okay. But when in doubt. Leave the, the female is always in control, mm-hmm. right? Technically, yeah, always. That's just how our mm-hmm. society set up, and, and, and it should be. If you don't know, if she's you don't know her other than being in the gym, you know anything about her, you don't need to s- slide up in her DMs and start this weird stuff. If you want to get her attention, learn to give genuine compliments that actually like genuine, mm-hmm. not like. Hey, you got a nice pooper. Not like an actual real compliment that compliments her. Like, even if it's about a lift or it, it doesn't have to, it just has to be genuine. Telling so even, a woman she looks, she's doing a fantastic job on a lift literally brightens her day yeah. so much. And then here's the thing. So even if, if, she, if she's between an exercise, so she, you can't really compliment her lift. Even if you just said, 
your hard work has paid off. You look phenomenal and walk the fuck off. Mm-hmm. You don't need a counter. You don't need to wait for her to freaking stroke your ego. Just walk off. If she's into you, believe me, she will she's let gonna, you know. She's going to speak to you the next time she yeah, sees you. Don't. And you guys, guess what? You guys are going to start having conversations. And then from there, right. then you can try. That's when you can right. try to start hitting on her actually a little bit because now you've built somewhat of a relationship. Yeah. You don't want to get into a friendship. <laughs> That's not your goal. But now you can actually yeah. start hitting on her because you'll find out very quickly whether or not that's she'll, she'll, she'll let you know if she's interested. Like, yeah. Uh, um, and yeah, you don't even have to hit on her. Just after you get to know her a little bit, ask her out. That's you still haven't hit on her yet. Yeah, that's, All you did was ask her out for coffee. No, like, literally be like, hey, would you want to go out sometime? Do, yeah. Do do whatever. Um, whatever these people are trying to get dates. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you have these dudes in the gym that are getting odd. Uh, jacked buff and they think they're strong and stuff but they're too afraid to talk to a woman right and it's like i think you got your priorities messed up i'm not saying don't work out i'm just saying if you're too scared what good is all the other things that you're doing if you're too scared to even have a conversation with if, you're sco- if you're too scared to even have a, even a face rejection yeah. yeah it's like Okay, let's say you are going to the gym so that you can get attraction from girls. Right. If you're too scared to talk to them, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Now all that hard work doesn't go anywhere. And What's then, the point? And then also think about it from her perspective. She's she's observing this whole thing too. And she's like, I was kind of into that guy, but he's a pussy around me. Mm-hmm. Like, they, now I'm turned like, off. Women like. Uh, but yeah, uh, we we watch. These guys do it all the time, and you're very entertaining. It's sad. Mm-hmm. It's very sad. It's like 50% sad as a man watching it, and then it's the other 50% is funny um, <laughs> just because of how pathetic it is. It just, it just got to act normal and not overly normal like you would with your buddies, but literally just treat her like a, just a regular human being mm-hmm. and like you're not trying to get with her. Right. And it'll... It, it'll help you out a little bit yeah. by stop f- not fantasizing about her and like worrying about everything that she's doing in the gym and think, Oh my goodness. No, just treat her like she's a normal person. Cause that's exactly what she is. Yeah. Another thing, quit doing guys. It's very obvious when you rearrange your workout schedule <laughs> for a particular female. <laughs> and if you don't think they notice or anyone else notices, we all notice every day. It's and it's 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 hilarious. It's hilarious to watch you chase them around the schedule because yeah. you're just like walking in on a random Tuesday and you're like, oh, "She's not here." And then I get to watch you show up like three other times that day looking for her. <laughs> That's when you go on a watch list. <laughs> <laughs> you got any more? You got any other? Uh, I think gym pretty- etiquette. I mean, there's more. There's way more. Yeah, but those don't, were kind of the top. I don't think so. Ten or. I don't even know how many it was. Top 12, whatever. I think that's good. Um, so, <clears throat> as always, we'll follow up. If you have etiquette questions, ask us in person or comments. Uh, private message us. Um, if there is a an area that you're interested in that we did not cover as far as gym etiquette goes, like, let us know. We'll answer it. And uh, I would like to say what our next topic is, but I have no idea. Mm, I don't know. We'll figure it out. I mean, we've, got, like a- we've got a bunch. Uh, let's see. Women's HRT, hormone management. I don't know if we'd be able to fit that in a pocket. That's like a whole day. I don't know. Because um, we want to do TRT too. Guys, TRT. We want to do cover SARMs. Um, I would like to cover supplements um, too. Not in the supplements as like pre-workout and protein. More like micronutrient. Yeah. Uh, amino Probably acids, going to like, like how, blocks. how your diet really does affect yeah. your performance and how you feel. Um, uh, what else have we talked about doing? I know. Uh, we're going we're gonna to have some athletes on here. We're going to do uh, baseball, football. Yeah. Um, but if you, uh, any other topics, like, again, just put them in the comments, message us, let us know. We're happy to cover and uh, share as much knowledge as we can with everybody. Yeah. Without pissing too many people off. (laughs) Oh, well. Yeah. All right. Thanks to all three people that were watching.